All right, welcome into the show. Today's Philadelphia Eagles Now is sponsored by 8sleep. Get $200 off and free shipping on the pod cover by going to 8sleep.com slash chat sports. If you want to improve your sleep, which is really the backbone of how we thrive as human beings, the only solution, 8sleep. We'll put that link down below in the comment section as well as in the description of this video. So I'm Chase Senior. Thank you so much for hanging out here with us on today's edition of Eagles. Now on the docket, a brand new Philadelphia Eagles mock draft as we are officially eight days away from the 2024 NFL Draft. We're going to go through all of the Eagles selections from yours truly during all seven rounds. And some pre-draft takeaways so far from Howie Roseman in this front office, Philadelphia in the pre-draft process has met with a bunch of offensive linemen, specifically a lot of offensive tackles who have stopped by the Novacare Complex in South Philadelphia. And also Philadelphia has met with almost all of the top cornerbacks in this year's draft class as well. Gives you an indication of maybe where they could go with the 22nd overall pick, but also depending on how the board falls, what they might do in the six rounds after the first initial round of the draft. You look at the Eagles draft picks here, first on the clock, round one, pick 22. And I think Philadelphia is in a great position here because they have three picks inside the top 53 to really fortify this roster and to fill in the gaps for what they couldn't address in free agency, but also to bring in players that they can groom and develop for the future years. So 22nd overall pick, that's very valuable. On the board at 50 and 53, no third round pick, but Philadelphia back on the clock, round four, 120 overall. And then that fifth round pick, 161 and 171, then 172. So a couple of consecutive picks there in the fifth round, three in total in round five. No round seven pick for Howie Roseman, but they do have a sixth round pick at number 210. Three compensatory picks to round things out for the Philadelphia Eagles here in the draft. And as we know, Howie Roseman, always aggressive, always a player to either move up or move back depending on how that board falls and what makes sense for the football team. So now Philadelphia, Thursday night, NFL draft in Detroit, on the clock, 22nd overall selection, and I am going with Cooper DeGene, the star-studded athlete out of Iowa, who I think at the next level, I like the Trent McDuffie comp. McDuffie was terrific in the Super Bowl under defensive coordinator Steve Spagnuolo for the Kansas City Chiefs. I love his versatility as a guy you can use as a slot corner, outside corner, hybrid linebacker, or a blitzer off the edge. And I just think Cooper DeGene has fantastic upside. From the NFL scouting combine earlier in March, I did report this, that the only top 30 visit that Cooper DeGene had set at that time was with the Philadelphia Eagles. I also listed the Niners, Seahawks, Saints, and Packers as other teams that had shown interest in him at that time. And Ian Rappaport confirming this news that some of those teams, especially Philadelphia, interested in Cooper DeGene because Rap Sheet tweeted this out on Wednesday that DeGene, a likely first rounder who impressed at his pro day, coming off that broken leg, by the way, only had four days available for top 30 visits due to the combine rechecks with that fractured fibula and his late pro day. He spent those days with the Steelers, the Seahawks, the Bills, and our Philadelphia Eagles. Why I'm going with Cooper DeGene here. Eagles brought him into the Novacare complex. They did their due diligence on the prospect. They are clearly interested in the player. And when you canvass the roster on the defensive side of the football, they have a need at cornerback and safety. And Cooper DeGene can fulfill one, if not both, of those needs, depending on how Vic Fangio utilizes him in this defense in his first year as the Eagles defensive coordinator coming up here in 2024. And speaking of Vic Fangio, he's looked at over the last decade plus as one of the best defensive minds in football. His fingerprints are spread out all across the NFL as far as his defensive system. So I have trust in Fangio to maximize the player and use Cooper DeGene as a Swiss Army knife of sorts. And you can use him as a multifaceted weapon on defense 
and C.J. Gardner-Johnson and the wrinkles that you can use at your disposal, I'm a big fan of that. Howie Roseman in this front office, they always love elite athletes with upside. That's what DeGene is, and you can find ways to use him from day one. Corner on the outside, corner on the inside, hybrid linebacker, safety, but has return experience as well. And with this new kickoff rule, can you find a way to put him on the field to pick up yards there to be an explosive player? His strengths when I scout him, he's a freak athlete. He can be utilized in a variety of techniques at that cornerback spot. He anticipates well. He credits that with playing quarterback in high school just being able to read what the offense is going to do because he understands what the thought process is, what the psyche, what the processing is from the quarterback position because he played the position. He had seven career interceptions at Iowa. Three of them came back for touchdowns. So when he has the ball in his hands, he's a threat to take it to the crib. He's versatile like Trent McDuffie, as I mentioned, has that special teams value as a returner. I imagine he can be a gunner as well. The weakness is he's coming off that fractured fibula. I don't have as many concerns about that, a bone fracture, as I would have if it's a torn ACL or a torn Achilles. He also gives up initial separation that can cause problems on the back end at times. Some people don't like that he doesn't have a clear-cut position, and he can also get handsy in coverage, which can lead to penalties. His 2023 coverage stats in 10 games played because he did get hurt during a November practice. He was targeted 46 times, gave up 20 catches, no touchdowns given up in coverage, only 194 yards for an Iowa defense that always brings it, even though their offense will have you thinking that you're watching 1900s, early 1900s offensive football. Five pass breakups, two picks, and a quarterback rating allowed of just 37.8. And there's been a sample size here the last two years of the player that he can become. Eight pass breakups in 2022, five pass breakups in 2023, all of his seven career interceptions coming over the last two years, and the career numbers pretty good there as well. This is a polarizing pick here. There is no doubt about it. Some people in the comment section, you're going to like it. Others are going to dislike it. So what do you think? Type L for like or D for dislike. Now we pivot and shift gears to the second round for Philadelphia. 50 overall. I just love the value of 50 and 53 because you can get some players who move the needle for your football team. We crossed off the need at cornerback and safety. Now we're going to cross off another need, but we're going to go best player available with the player who I think is a top 45 guy on my big board, and that's Junior Colson, the linebacker out of Michigan. I trust Jim Harbaugh and how he evaluates players, and he has a lot of great things to say about Junior Colson, and I also love the toughness that he has, the path that he has. He is built for Philadelphia. Junior Colson grew up on a farm in Haiti. His dad died when he was young, so then he was placed in an orphanage. He came to the USA at nine years old, right outside of Nashville, basically fell in love with the game of football right from the jump. I like the size at 6'2", 238. He's only 21 years old, but he doesn't play like an immature or inexperienced player because he played in every game since he went to Ann Arbor. 43 games in total, 36 starts. So while he is young in age, he is not young as far as his football life and football experience goes. Did not work out pre-draft at the NFL Scouting Combine or at his pro day because of a hamstring injury, but he doesn't have a lot of injury concerns because he's been a durable player. Stout frame, good build, lateral quickness, acceleration, always important at the linebacker spot. His work ethic, people rave about it. He had zero penalties in 2023, so you're getting a smart player who might be able to play from the jump alongside Devin White. Good coverage linebacker and had 257 career stops playing for the Wolverines and played on that national championship team, which dump truck Washington back in Houston at a game that I was at, had an opportunity to scout Junior Colson there up close and personal, really liked what I saw from the player. He's built Philly tough, as I noted, and this is another example of that. When asked about playing through injuries and never missing a game at Michigan, he said, quote, unless I can't physically move, I'm going to be out there playing. Philadelphians 
everywhere. And Eagles fans worldwide who watch this show, they're gushing just hearing that quote and reading that quote on the screen. Career stats for Junior Colson here, 256 tackles throughout his career in those 43 games played, 8.5 TFLs. He's a prototypical coverage linebacker who can cover the seam, running backs on the wheel route, tight ends, slot wide receivers, 2.5 sacks. So he's unlike Devin White in the sense that you don't really include him on some of those blitz calls but just a consistent producer who in the last two years has nearly 200 combined tackles. Now to 53 overall. What's the theme here of this mock so far? We're going best player available because that's my draft strategy, but I'm also going with some needs here. Cornerback safety with Cooper DeGene, linebacker with Junior Colson, and then right tackle with Roger Rosengarten out of Washington. There's been some buzz he could go to the Niners at the back end of the first round, 31 overall. If he falls to the Eagles here at 53, as a lot of people have him as a mid to late second round pick, I think this would be a great value play here as well. Really good upsize, has a lot of speed, and I like the player that he can become. He doesn't need the play right from the jump. He's a good scheme fit. Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni in addressing the media during their pre-draft press conference on Tuesday at the Novacare Complex said that we're okay with taking a player who does not need to play in 2024. He's 6'5", 308. He ran a 4.92 40-yard dash. That was the fastest 40-yard dash at the Combine among all offensive linemen. And you think about how the Eagles have utilized Jason Kelsey, Jordan Mailata, Lane Johnson. They want offensive linemen who can get out on those pull blocks in space and pancake guys and drive them into the turf, drive them into the grass. And Rosengarten has experience with doing that. Light basketball feet. I think Jeff Stoutland would be able to really groom and develop him in a beautiful way. Good hands to block and finish. A good climber. Good in the screen game. Obviously, Philadelphia is going to do a lot more of that with Saquon Barkley. He, too, has been a durable player. Started all 28 games the last two years. The weaknesses here in concerns, not a huge lower frame, so he can lose balance at times. Should he have returned to school? A lot of people thought, including Mel Kuyper, that if he went back to Washington for the 2024 season, that maybe he could have been that top 10 pick, but clearly upside with a lot of development that could be in store for Philadelphia. Be sure to subscribe to us here on Philadelphia Eagles now for more NFL draft coverage and more Eagles draft coverage. And if you're going to join us for our coverage of the 2024 draft, I want you to type me down in the comment section. Hit that sub button, hit that bell icon, and turn on your notifications. Therefore, when we push out a show like this, when we go live, you'll be notified. And we will be live Thursday, Friday, Saturday, every day of the draft, every single round, Every single selection, we're built different here at Chat Sports. Don't forget to lock us in and hit that sub button. As I mentioned off the top, today's Eagles Now is sponsored by Eight Sleep. Sleep to power a whole new you. Sleep science shows that in order to sleep our best, our body temperature needs to drop in the early and middle part of sleep and then rise in the morning. Well, the pod cover from Eight Sleep will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed like a fitted sheet, and it allows you and your shouty or your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees. In addition to keeping you at the perfect temperature all night, the pod also tracks your sleep and health metrics. On average, pod users see their sleep quality improve by 32% after just one month on the pod. I'm telling you right now, producer Chip will back me up. No better way to improve your day-to-day -day life better than sleep. And the easiest way to do that, the 8 Sleep Pod 3. So go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports. The device fits right next to your bed. You can power everything right from your smartphone. So easy to use. And if you use that link, you can get the intelligent sleep system. 8sleep.com slash chat sports. $200 off and free shipping. Now we go to pick 120 overall. This is the Eagles' fourth round selection after not being on the board in round three. And a player who I think is falling under the radar 
one of my sleeper draft prospects is Malik Washington, the wide receiver out of Virginia, a Northwestern transfer. Why I decided to go this route, he is a twitched up athlete. He can go from zero to 60 miles per hour in a blink, and I think that he would be a great fit in the slot for the Eagles. Now, I wouldn't be incredibly surprised. I wouldn't be floored if Howie Roseman decided to go wide receiver round one or with one of those two second round selections. But you can get a good value selection here with Washington, who is twitched up. He's fast. He's very quick. He's a good fit in the slot alongside Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. Kellen Moore can utilize him in a variety of ways. He's also dependable. Rarely drops the football. I think this is a very underrated prospect. Now, some of the concerns here is that he has one great year of production, but come on now. I'm not too concerned about that because it's not like Northwestern is an offensive juggernaut. Like, they're in that category with Iowa where they never have a good quarterback. They never put up eye-popping offensive numbers. So, he goes to Virginia and he ended up having a great year. 110 catches, 1,400 yards, nine touchdowns. And that size, yeah, he's 5'8", 191, but you're not asking him to be a perimeter X wide receiver, 4'4", 7", 40-yard dash. But I think his play shows you that he plays a little bit faster than that. He goes to the ACC from the Big Ten. He led the conference in receiving. A team captain who his teammates and coaches love accelerates to top gear very quickly. He can adjust to the football in the air, something that Quez Watkins could never do. Have fun with him, Pittsburgh. Number one in missed tackles forced with 35 in 2023, rugged tough. And I think that's all important. Like when we talk about Philadelphia athletes, you need to be able to play in the pressure cooker that is Philadelphia. It's not like other places where fan bases don't care or you don't have to deal with the media pressure. Philadelphia is completely different. He gives you special teams value as well. 19 and a half yards per kick return in 2023. And he is short, does have those shorter arms. But when you use him in the slot with that quickness, you don't have to fit the ball into such tight windows with the player like this. Muhammad Kamara is my selection, the edge rusher out of Colorado State with the pick overall at 161. And his production this past year was really, really impressive. He is 6'1", 248 pounds. He's probably maxed out that type of frame that he has, 4, 5, 7, 40-yard dash. I'm good enough with the speed there. He can play a little bit of outside linebacker. He can be that edge rusher, an intense competitor, just a psycho mentality when he tries to get off the ball and attack the quarterback, and he wants to bring it against opposing offensive linemen, a very productive last two years in college. Teammates and coaches love him. Culture is really important, whether you're putting together a workforce like we do here at Chat Sports or you're putting together a football team. And he's a little bit undersized, which is probably why he's going to fall this late in the draft and why he's going to be a rotational edge rusher. But that's what the Eagles need. Look at what he did here in 2023 for Colorado State 56 tackles, 17 TFLs, 13 sacks, and 64 pressures. You want to find ways for Vic Fangio to implement him in this defensive scheme? I dig it. And in 2022, he had 16 TFLs with eight and a half sacks and 53 pressures. I even like the sack production in 10 games played in 2021 with six and a half there. And then my final three picks. I think you need to fortify a little bit of depth at defensive tackle. We decide to go about it in the way of Gabe Hall, defensive tackle out of Baylor. A lot of people look at him as kind of a fourth-round pick. So if you get him 171 overall, I like the value there. Isaac Rendo, 4-3, 40-yard dash. Runs a little bit upright, but that explosive getaway speed. Keep in mind that Kenny Gainwell, entering the final year of his rookie contract, I think you want to reset the running back clock a little bit. So back-to-back -back selections, we go defensive tackle, and then we go running back. And then 2-10 overall in the sixth round, you lost Jack Stoll. I know that you brought in C.J. Uzama, you have Albert Okwa Abenam, you have Grant Calcaterra, but Tip Riemann out of Illinois is looked at as one of the better pass blocking and one of the better blocking tight ends in the NFL. So if Uzama just doesn't really cut it for you, you do have that good blocking tight end 
and Tip Riemann. So great my mock draft here, A, B, C, D, or F. We're going to do probably one more of these in the lead up to next Thursday when the 2024 NFL draft goes down. A, B, C, D, or F, let me know how I did. You can praise me. You can rip me. You can love me. You can hate me. I just want you to share your thoughts down in the comment section. Thank you.